We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back with Fibonacci. So this segment, we'd like to just do a quick review of some of the major markets uh, looking at um, Fibonacci and, and what they can tell. We talked about it a little bit on the uh, morning show uh, lead into the opening range, but we like to look at Fibonacci on an intraday basis. Uh, but I think what we'll do here is we'll use Fibonacci on a longer term basis Starting with the dailies, we could certainly go to weekly, Jim, um, if you'd like. But I think it's important to start with the dailies because that's what a lot of traders look at, especially whether they're day traders or if they're taking longer term views. It's it's interesting to know where there might be some some overhead resistance or depending on the market might be what's what's lower and where we could go. Yeah, let's do it. So we've Dailies got the E-mini daily chart up here. Fibonacci, just uh, go to your pencil up at the top. Those are your drawing tools. So Fibonacci is really going to be about what you look at, um, what you see on the chart, and and actually manipulating the tool itself. It's not a study. It doesn't auto-calculate. Um, Fibonacci retracements. You'll see this F8 button right here. So a couple things. One is uh, there are actually three different or four different Fibonacci tools, retracements, extensions, time extensions in Fibonacci circle. We're not going to talk about Fibonacci circle, but I think with the E-mini, I think it's important to see the first three Fibonacci tools there. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the retracement. And the retracement, Jim turned me on to this. This is really great. The idea of an inside and an outside Fibonacci. Inside Fibonacci is kind of what is the current trend right here? I'm going to just use this low and this high, assuming we've made a high of this trend. Now, maybe we haven't, but I'm going to use this as a retracement. So if the market turns down, we're going to look at where it could possibly go. And what I want to do is I'm going to blow this up a little bit and just think, okay, Fibonacci numbers, important ones are 23.6. It's kind of a lesser Fibonacci number, but really 38.2, 61.8. So Man, you just you just downgraded 23.6. I did. I did. 60 76.4 the same reason. Um yeah. 38.2. Now this gap is due to uh roll, contract roll, but yeah. interesting to see that that 5660 was so much resistance back there. And then 6180, not not really much 5558 roughly. Not nothing really special about that, but it just gives you some good levels of where this might return to if if we see a pull down. Yeah, and these these levels are universal. This isn't just me and Tom making them up. This is a universal <laughs> uh measurement. We're measuring a distance on a chart right for a, a price differential distance and these are something that many many traders have on their screen and use those as areas of interest and in, for trades and for stops and for targets that makes them uh very powerful right other traders are seeing these as well um the outside fib let's just take a look now if you're a keyboard person which i'm not jim i'm not really somebody who uses the keyboard to probably the best extent but you'll notice yeah. these are key. These are hot keys to get to these tools. So yeah. uh, I'll try it next time. I could use F8 instead of hitting the drawdown. I don't have to go yep. into this menu if I know the hot key. But I'm going to look at this longer term trend. This is the low in in early August. So I'm going to use this low and go to the current high. So if we're thinking that this, if there's a pullback and it, it it's a little more extensive, where could it go? low to high. Well, what's interesting to me is look at that 5662 is that minor Fibonacci number. And on the shorter term, 5660 is the major Fibonacci number, right? So there's a little bit of reinforcement at this 5660 level. Yeah. Um, I just kind of know from experience when you see that on one, you know, minor and major, you tend to see another level line up. So look at this 50, uh, 55, 58, 
5558 right there. Maybe it's a right. more important retracement level than we think. Yeah, so it gives you like right cuz you're doing two different measurements and um you know there's folks doing maybe one of these measurements there's traders doing maybe both of these measurements. It's like all right, so this number now all of a sudden has become is twice as important. And then 100% retraced is 61.8 retraced here. Yeah. And that within 12 cents. So, you know, this gives you a sense of are these legitimate levels? 3861 100% they fit on this range of a longer upturn, you know, up uptrend. Okay, great. So that's that's if we retrace, right? Let's take a look at the extension. I'm gonna um, get rid of these because you know how to put those on yourself. You can do it yourself. Um, extensions, right? And and Jim did a great job this morning with this. I want to measure, see if we can, if this if this continues, where could we go? So I'm going to use the previous trend, low here, high here, and then extend. Now it's going to give you different levels generally if you have what we call, I'm going to use this level right there. Where am I going to affix it to? I'm going to affix it to the low. And unfortunately, it, it well, it just low right here. My extensions are different okay so i i changed my extensions i'm just going to really quickly add some levels we're going to do 61.8 did and, that and, and by the way while tom's doing this uh re remember when when i use the harmonic fibonacci i want to put an hour in there so bad tom fibonacci <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, this what this is this is how you can customize it right right let's see if that worked so i'm not going to i'm not going to go through all the details but basically what this does is it gives you okay if we move in in this direction yeah with the same magnitude my target is 5945 right up there and then yeah. another important level is 61.8 6285 this is kind of unknown territory, right? These are all-time highs. That's one way to look at the extensions. Your defaults will actually have the Fibonacci retracement levels as we uh, the the regular Fibonacci retracement levels. They'll be in the extension as well. I've modified mine, so um, I'm just going to save this as a a different my def yeah, we'll save that. Okay. Now um, those are the extensions. Real quick, time. I don't think enough is said about time. I think we had Michael Lytic on yesterday talking about time. Time is important. And so time extensions are breaking up the number of bars into Fibonacci time periods, right? 61.8, uh, 38.2. And so the question is, if we were to measure the, the low to the low, the peak lows, where does the high come in between it, right? So I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go, let's say, to this low right here. So at 30.8.2% roughly, we got here 61.8. It's pretty close to the high right there. So the question is, if this is following the same kind of time cycle, maybe we've hit a, maybe we've hit a low and we expect to see a retracement. So you can use that with different time periods too. You could say, you know what? I want to use a longer time period. I'm going to start back here. And as you notice, when I do that, it pulls out these divisions. And so if you look at this trend, 38.2 was about halfway through the trend. Maybe it was 61.8 through the trend. So where is that level? Where is that similar distance right here? We might be extended, uh, you know, for a little bit of time to come. So, um, what's interesting to me is, look, Jim, what is between these two lows right here? That peak high came right in at sixty-one point eight. So, yeah, we think history repeats itself. We might get a peak high early December. Okay, so you're all right. This is interesting. So you're you're you you're saying, hey. You're equating 161 and 61, right? Yeah. And all right, if, if, if you know, if if we go along the current path, 
uh, then we could then we could expect or hope to expect or there's a certain level of probability that we're going to get um, uh, by the by December we're going to have an equal distance move up to yeah where your where your crosshairs is yeah well this is more about time right so what I okay so if we look at this low in April to low yep. in September. Yeah, the peak high was sixty one point eight percent along oh, yes, that yeah. path, right? I don't know what price it'll be. That's to be determined. But this is saying, well, if this cycle is similar, then maybe sixty one point eight. Th that one sixty one is kind of the same distance along the path as uh, after this peak. Then mm -hmm. the peak high is between these two peak lows. Totally makes sense. So, you know, timing is is about where the price is at what time. And so just as I think Michael Lytic will say, yeah, we can kind of figure out what a target might be, but it's more important, I think, to know when, when we'll see inflection points. This is trying to identify that. And again, past performance, not indicative of future results, um, but this is a, a guide, so to speak. Now, could completely do something else, right? It could be in an uptrend that doesn't stop. It could be in a downtrend that is is trending. It could be sideways, right? And not at a high. Okay, that's fine. But um, just something to look out for. So let's take a look. Maybe we'll take a look real quick at, at the micro NASDAQ because we know it's not making new all-time highs, right? Right. So the question is, where, you know, what would you draw here, Jim? What would you look at in terms of Fibonacci? What would you want to look at? Well, just a regular fib? Yeah, anything. Yeah, well, so I would start well, there's a whole bunch of things a whole bunch of distances to measure. I would, you know, right. middle of September to where we're at right now would be the very first thing I'd look at. Okay. So let's take a look inside right, fib, we, if you will. Yeah, what we have a trend going. I'm measuring the trend right now. We have a really big uh uh seller's wick on the top of the contemporary candle here. And so I want to see what my my retracement potential is if if we don't you know make new highs today so uh looking at that you know jumps out to me is 23.6 again minor fibonacci but the first one we would see in the retracement right above that 20,000 level yeah and 20,023 i mean that's a tenth of a percent of the price above that 20,000 level it's like nothing yep. right it's a it's yep. a rounding error so you could say 20,000 right there 19700 is the next one right yeah so um that would be that would be something to look out for if it did retrace 3861 61 is 1980 mm -hmm. uh 188 19200 let's say yeah yeah and so yeah that's kind of the, that's that's the latest trend right and you could do you know you could you could use that very low wick in august right there and go all the way to the top but you know, the question is, right, there's more of an outside fib right there. Exactly. And that changes those levels a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Orion's turtle, very good point, confluence, right? Where do these levels line up? So I'm going to I'm gonna do these out of order. I should have uh, just drawn another one, but we're going to go back to that low and see, are there, is there, you know, are there lines of confluence? I don't really see it here too much. I mean, it seems like these are staggered by about 100 points each. Yeah. Uh, but still, they can provide different, you know, important levels, right? And that's so, fine, So, Tom, too. To go, go hide a low from the uh, end of August. No, no, go lower to, yeah, uh, middle of August. You see, yeah, go, go hide a low and see what you get. No, leave that there. Leave that one there. And okay. just add a, yeah, get rid of that one. And then go high to low. And let's see what we get. High to low, right there. So we're measuring a smaller distance, right? It's yep. a downtrend. We're measuring the downtrend. We're measuring the trend. Um, and then, so yeah, there you go. You got that you know, 38.2 area of interest for me. Right. So very close to that 50% retracement level was yeah. this 38. To re retracement level in the other direction. So yeah. a little bit of confluence there. Um, and, and this 
0.2%, kind of between mm -hmm. here. So, you know, that might be interesting. That that nine 960 split the difference might be very yeah. interesting. Well, Ryan's turtle says they're called areas of confluence. I think that's yes. what you said. Yes, exactly. Is that like a CMT thing? Um, it could be. I think it's just confluence, meaning things lining up, right? It could be an ast right. astronomy term as well. The following presentation is for educational purposes only. All the symbols, trading ideas, and market commentary are for educational and demonstrational purposes only and are not recommendations or trading advice. Live sample trading occurs in a simulated environment. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All the information and content presented is provided by Ninja Trader LLC, and the opinions expressed by all third party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involves substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade futures with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.